Well, it kind of yeah. makes sense. I mean, we're thrown into life, and when you're young, you might experience certain traumatic events, but they don't affect you a great deal. Right. But after a while, you just kind of get beaten up, and you start to believe And you things. get bored. You get bored. What I think mean? boredom is one of the biggest problems of modern life. The very <sighs> word didn't exist until modern times. Is that right? Uh, there's no word in any ancient language for generalized boredom. Interesting. Yeah, so things like sloth would have yeah. existed, but generalized boredom. Right, right. Yeah, I've heard you say this, not boredom about any one thing in particular. But boredom about life itself. You say, which covers us like the sky, just everything. That's a linguistic fact. It puzzles me, though. Yeah. I mean, isn't somebody like, uh, uh, oh, Caligula, bored? Yeah. Isn't that why he does what he does? Yeah. Well, uh, I think, I like what Aquinas, his differentiation between curiosity and studiousness. Mm. And most people today, when you hear curiosity, we think of it as a, as a virtue. He says it's a vice because he sees it as just accumulating useless knowledge. The difference for is that vain curiosity, which is a vice, is mm. arrogant. Uh, mm. It wants to know everything. It plays God. Mm. Whereas humble curiosity is just the search for truth. And that's yeah. just honesty. That's a, that's a virtue. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what he would call studiousness. We have a, we have a desire to know. Yeah. Yeah, so why do you think... Why do you think we're bored? I'm bored. I'm bored all the time. I'm bored with myself. I'm bored with everything. Well, like me, you probably have ADD. Okay. Well, you, I've heard you say this. When did you know you had ADD? Not Were until, you diagnosed? Not or? until my uh, daughter was uh, uh, diagnosed with it. Oh, really? She's been in special schools all her life. Yeah. She's, she's brilliant at things really? like uh, computers and animals, but yep. not with language. Yeah. So she's... Uh, a mixture. I, I think everybody in the world is very good at something and very bad at something. Oh. Uh, anyway, yes. we had her uh, evaluated uh, to uh, justify putting her in private school, uh, and uh, the psychiatrist uh, wanted to evaluate the whole family. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a session with me, he said, you have ADD, you know. And he went really? through 21 symptoms, and I had them all. What were some of the symptoms? Uh, not just boredom, but... Uh, you can diagnose me right here. This I, be can, great. I can remember... Every word of a poem that I read once and love deeply, yes. but I can't remember the third thing that my wife tells me to do. You know, go down the cellar and bring yes. up the table and, and the batteries. And, and that's a sign, and, is it? And, and the mousetrap. Okay. Yeah. And that's a sign of ADD or at least one of the yeah, possible symptoms? I think symptoms? a lot of academics have it. Yeah. Especially philosophers. They usually have ADHD, which is attention deficit high definition. They like to define their terms. Ah, yes, exactly, to be clear. Yeah, I think... Uh, I, I can't finish a movie. Uh, we have Frad Family. Um, my last name's Frad, so we call it Frad Family Movie Night. We all go down and we sit down. And I always like the idea of watching a movie. Mm -hmm. But about 25 minutes in, I'm like, there's something else I could be doing, which is weird because I love the beach, being from Australia. Oh, me too. Yeah. So I can sit on an ocean. Me too. I can, I can sit and Not watch on waves. An ocean, on a, on I can sit and watch waves without being bored. Much more easily than me I too. can read a book through. So being why bored. is that? Because, well, the same reason uh, as in the poem Trees. Uh, poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. Yeah. Books are made by fools like me, but only yeah. God can make a wave. Yeah. There's, there's something... It's rhythmic. It allows you to kind of, uh, to use Thomas Merton's words, slow down to a human tempo. Yeah, but so is a washing machine. But that's not <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I don't sit in front of a washing machine. I sit in front of waves. <laughs> Touche. Yeah, they're, they're, good point. The, the Iroquois have a word for it. It's called orenda. Okay. It's the spiritual sugar that the great spirit put in certain things like moving water and yeah. stars like and it. mountains. Yeah. It just attracts us. So speaking of books, are you reading any books right now? <sighs> Somebody once said to me, you must have written more books than you've read. Uh, that's becoming increasingly true. Um, I don't I'm reading, that can't be true. No, or, do you read not. bits of books, or do you read, read the whole thing? Nineteen out of twenty books, I read bits of. Bits One of maybe non-fiction books, I read bits of. But fiction, I mean, you can't just pick up in the fourth chapter. You either abandon it after fifty yeah. pages, or you read it straight through. Uh, I must <clears> confess, <throat> this is this is almost a sin. First time I read the Lord of the Rings, I stopped after page fifty. I said, I'm not interested in. Really, hobbits. that is a sin. Yes. And then somebody said, go beyond page 50, and then you'll get to the elves and dragons. And I was oh, totally hooked. Yeah. I just read the first part to my kids. So we're on the second book right now. And it's just gripping. It's lovely. Masterpiece. What's your favorite fiction book? The Lord of the Rings, certainly. Really? It's the greatest book of the 20th century. Four Poles picked it. Everybody knows that except the critics. Hmm. 
I uh, I have a toss up between um, yeah, Lord of the Rings, but probably I like Dostoevsky. So I like uh, uh, I think I like Crime and Punishment more than even the, more than the Brothers Karamazov. I think so. That might say more about me they're, than they're it. They're both masterpieces, but yeah, the, if the Lord of the Rings is not a novel but an epic, the Brothers Karamazov has to be the greatest novel ever written. And okay, why do you say that? It's profound. Yeah. It's one of the few books that radically changed my mind on a philosophical issue. I always thought the notion of collective responsibility or universal guilt was a, a, a kind of a exaggeration or maybe a liberal guilt trip or something like that. Uh, he persuaded me simply through the plot events okay. that every good that we do has consequences yes. in everybody else's life, and every evil that we do has yeah. consequences in everybody else's life. So in is, an indirect way, everybody is responsible for all the sins of the world. This is Zosima, isn't it? Yeah, South is Zosima. Yeah. Very profound. Yeah, maybe I, I need to read it again, because I just found there were a lot of kind of tangents that, you know, if you were to oh, take... Oh, yeah. yeah. It's enormous. Yeah, it's, it's it, elaborate. It's just the opposite of a Tolstoy book, which is perfectly now, classically... Uh, written, but yes. yes, he's all over the place. I love him. I just started reading Anna Karenina. I'm about 200 pages in, and I'm a bit bored. Really? Now, the chances that that says something about him is very unlikely, so I get that it's my fault. I think it's because it's hard to to love Anna. Yeah. She's bratty and yeah, selfish, and yeah. she gets her comeuppance at the end, which is very, very sad. Very hard to write, write, write good heroes today. Good yeah. villains is easy. Good yeah. heroes is hard. That's what, that's what Tolkien did in The Lord of the Rings. You've got real heroes. Yeah, well, why do you think that is? Let's think, I mean... Uh, we're cynical. We're, we're bored, cynical. We're jaded. Don't believe in heroism. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Who's that, uh, the author from Georgia, Flannery O'Connor? Ah, yeah. I love Flannery O'Connor because she has short stories and I don't get bored. Yeah. My kids love it too. Yeah. I shouldn't read it to my kids. They're like, tell us that one where the old lady gets <laughs> shot. Okay, <laughs> shut up. Not in front of people. We don't read that. <laughs> but she could... Uh, it was almost like she played into people's cynicism in yeah. order to bring out the grace that was... Oh, sure. She's a missionary. And the missionary has to start with uh, where people are, mm. which is down over there. And then you bring them over here. Mm. So then what, what, what about The Idiot? Have you read The Idiot by Dostoevsky? I never got to it. No, I know the plot. Yeah. Uh, I think he wrote I, that... I, I read part of it, actually. Okay. Wonderful style. But Didn't um, grip you? Brothers Karamazov is a, an improvement on the idiot because Alyosha is the complete Jesus and ah, not just the, Prince the Mishkin nice Jesus. Was, yeah. Mishin, Mishkin so is a, kind of a... If I'm not mistaken, I thought uh, Crime and Punishment was written first and then later on the idiot. I know that Brothers Karamazov was last okay. because he planned a sequel to it. And ah, died that's right. He yeah, he did too. Um, and I thought that, you know, Raskolnikov or Mishkin was like the mirror image of Raskolnikov. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting about Raskolnikov is the, the name means schism, I think, or it comes oh, from that root. That. And what you notice about him is when he starts overthinking things, he becomes evil, does mm -hmm. evil things. Yep. But he, had, he does these spontaneous acts of kindness for people, yep. like the woman he meets and he throws, he gives money to, to the family whose husband had just died. This is because God designed the heart and we have a lot to do with designing our thoughts. So there's usually a, a beating heart, even under the, the evil cynic. Yeah. Yeah. Um. In fact, that's my only slight hope that maybe the universalist is right and maybe the most wicked of us will repent and be saved in the Wouldn't end. That'd be wonderful. Why yeah. are people so afraid of us hoping for that? There are some people. I think the church has taught... Well, the Blessed Virgin commanded us to pray for it, that, that uh, uh, prayer that she added to the rosary to the three children at Fatima. Uh, lead all souls uh, lead to heaven, especially, especially those, especially those, those most in need. We can't be sure of it, but we have to hope for it. Mm. Not that it's likely. Right. I mean, why would Jesus say of Judas it would have been better if that man had never there been born? Yeah. That doesn't sound like uh, universalism, but we don't know. Mm. It's, it's, it's good not to know some things. One more thing about um, Dostoevsky. I think the reason you can't turn his books into good films is because of a, a lot of the drama plays out within the psyche of the person. Right. So brilliantly. Like he right. explains people's mental states in a way that you say, I thought I was the only one who experienced this. Whereas with Lord of the Rings, a lot of it is exterior. That's it's a not... good question. I teach a course in philosophy and cinema, and that's one of the questions we ask in the course. Why are so few great novels turned into great movies? Why are so gr many great films turned into great movies? Why are so many great films not turned into ah. great movies? 
The two versions of the Brothers Karamazov were both very bad. Yeah, you the American you version and the Russian version. And again, it's all playing on in the head. He's telling you what they're going through and thinking. On the other hand, the BBC's version of The Tale of Two Cities I thought was a masterpiece. Okay, have And very that. faithful. Okay. I've read very little. I only really started reading after my conversion in Rome in 2000. So I was an agnostic. I thought that God was a cute idea invented by people to make death less scary. And uh, I went with a bunch of Christians to Rome. Uh, you've heard of the World Youth Days? Mm -hmm. So there was about 2.5 million young people there. And I encountered Christians who loved Jesus and mm -hmm. weren't weird and mm -hmm. were like saving sex to marriage and all of these bizarre things. And I thought, why are they happier than me and my friends? That's the unanswerable question. Yeah. That's what converted the world, the happiness of the saints. Yeah. Why are these people singing hymns and forgiving their enemies as we're feeding them to the lions? Yeah. Yeah. No answer to that question except the truth. Yo, thanks for watching. You can watch the entire episode on YouTube if you want. You can listen to it at The Matt Frad Show by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And feel free to support me, patreon.com slash mattfrad.